Wah! <laughs> Just, I have to get you back for that now. Happy Tuesday. Rochelle is currently getting the taste of pickle out of her mouth because <gasps> Justin has these, um, it's like the bean boozled, yeah. but it's sour, what is it? Sour? Yeah, it's like sour, sour punch bites. Sour punch yeah. bites? She yeah. thought she had watermelon, it was pickle. How are you? 10 out of 10, do not recommend. I don't know, Taylor. My taste buds are in mourning right now. Oh! But um, <laughs> we, how are you? I'm good. Had a great weekend. Amazing. Justin and I saw the solar eclipse in Ohio, Pemberville. That was incredible. Yeah. And great you weekend. turned 25. There <laughs> we go. Love Birthday it. celebration. Lots of celebrating over the weekend. Yes, there so that was. was a lot of fun. And hopefully we're going to keep that celebration going on this afternoon into the evening as well because today is opening day for the Lansing Lug Nuts. We're excited. I don't know if you guys can see it. If you can tell, I've got my Lug Nuts jersey today because I'm, I'll be going live from Jackson Field in downtown Lansing, giving everyone the Lug Nut lineup for the season. But what we really want to see is Rochelle sing the national anthem again at Jackson Field. Please. <coughs> Well, if I have any more of this pickle, I don't know if I can, okay? <laughs> it may uh, kind of poison my vocal cords. <laughs> but, yes, those are some really fun and exciting things that people can do, not just myself, but all of you guys at home. We're having a lot of fun on and off the field, so we're going to talk to the general manager about what he thinks is going to happen this season, how he's feeling about his players, yeah. how much that they've been um, not rehearsing. <laughs> you know, practicing. Practicing, <laughs> you know, the theater and me, the singing and the, the they're, hey, sportsing. They're interchangeable between the different um, yes. activities. Yes, the sportsing, you know, I get those mixed up and whatnot. <laughs> but we're going to talk about how they've been preparing off season and what they're going to bring on the field tonight and throughout the rest of the season. And they've um, been kicking it off to a great start, or swinging it off, I should say, to a great start. Better, better, hey. Better, better, hey. <laughs> exactly. So we'll talk about that. We're going to talk to Jesse, who gives us a play by play. Jesse gets you pumped up, too. He so. does. Yes. He really does. He's got the perfect job. Oh, yeah, he does. I know. And then on top of that, we'll talk to Amanda Rich, who run, runs the marketing and the fan engagement. So uh, on top of singing the national anthem, you know, there's a lot of those really cool activities that yeah. get the family involved, that get the kids involved. I feel like going to the baseball game is like, a family favorite activity. You're outside, you have good food, great food. You have an activity to do, exactly. and then they put on more activities so you yeah. can get involved. Exactly, so they have all of that. I don't know if they have those pickles out there. But uh, they got a lot of other great things, and we're gonna give you, like I said, the play-by-play play on and off the field all hour long. And again, we'll tell you I can get tickets as well. I don't know if there's any more for tonight, but of course, how we can get them to you throughout the season. Yeah. It's Tuesday, I'm so to in about uh, 20 go. minutes, we'll find a puppy or a kitty or a bunny, and hopefully we'll get it back by three when the show begins. <laughs> Running around the office. Otherwise, we'll be like, oh, I want the yes. kitty or the puppy or the ra yeah, rabbit. You guys have had hedgehogs on there. Hedgehog. That the was the, pigs. the ferret. The ferret the with ferret. no spine. That was the craziest one. With no spine. Do and they not she have? held it and she held it like this and like. Do they typically not have? Or this one didn't have a spine. This one. I don't have I was a little afraid. Knowledge. Can I be so honest? I, I dropped out of the knowledge. segment last second because I said I'm too scared. I was too scared. I thought I was going to jump on me. But um. Kristen, do you know? Do all ferrets have spines or no? This one didn't, though. It did have a spine. Oh, it did have a spine. Oh, <laughs> she remembers <laughs> better than me. It's just, when they get relaxed, they're very flexible. Oh. And a lot of people call them furry noodles because they're, they're just that flexible. They're known as yeah. furry noodles because their spines are just flexible. So it did have a spine. It was just very flexible. He was very He was a lot more relaxed than I was, okay? Because I hid with Justin in the, in the weather center, and I said, I'm scared. You can say you were a little spiny. Yeah, I talk about it. I lost it. Lost my backbone oh, completely. <laughs> Yes, and then of course, Claudia's got a great story this afternoon about a Union flag, a Civil War flag oh, wow. that is actually here in Michigan and it's making its way down to Virginia. Wow. So she's going to give us a history lesson. We've got some baseball, Love and we've got lessons. yep, and we've got a nice puppy, kitty, bunny, ferret, who knows what. Just don't bring ferrets or pickles near Russia, please. <laughs> I can only handle so much. <laughs> But if you, we'll stop stressing you out about it right please, now. Please, <laughs> please. But uh, we've got a lot in store today, a lot in store this week. And if you miss any of it, just head to our socials, all the same, WILX Studio 10. And until then, let's play ball. Play ball. We'll see, see you later, later guys. Rochelle. Sounds good. For more of Rochelle's fun energy, <laughs> head to WILX Studio 10 to rewatch anything or go ahead, uh, pass on any links. Um, or <laughs> if you want to advertise with Studio cool. 10 or participate we'll, we'll in any of the ticket giveaways or any other giveaways, go to Studio 10 at WILX.com and um, communicate with them over email. There, we, there you go. Um, and then something else, 
The WIC your message, appreciate the happy birthday shout out. Hope you all had an amazing weekend and also checked out that solar eclipse because Justin um, has a friend down in Pemberville, Ohio. Oh, and it came back out. That was all the time. Oops, Hello, let me guys. put that back up for a it's quick all, second. It's all, it's all good. Um, I'm trying to pull up Facebook to see if we can show them that picture. Oh, I've, I've got it with me. Okay, you've got it with you. Oh, Never yeah. mind. Good. Oh, yeah. He's he's ready to go. Oh yeah. Uh, but yes, that was that was a blast. That <laughs> yeah, was really fun. It was a good time. And uh, again, it's um, good to know people in many places. And we happen to have a really good buddy of mine who was in my wedding, uh, my buddy Harold, down uh, in Pepperville, Ohio, is where he grew up. He lives in Gaylord now. He works at the National Weather Service. We went to his parents' family farm. They still run down there. Um, they have the chickens in the South back. Toledo, yeah, and it was just really really cool experience getting to see it and. For me, second time with totality in seven years uh, within the continental U.S. And so it was very cool to see it a second time. It was, it was awesome for me, I kind of told you earlier, to, to have known what was going to kind of take place and to see everyone else's reaction because I think everyone else there was seeing it for the first time. And so me being like round two, it's kind of like when you watch a movie that's really good and you want to show it to a friend and you're just looking at them to see what their reaction <laughs> is and all the, the crazy parts. And so I was kind of doing that throughout most of the event. And, oh, and, so it, was, cool. and it was really nice. And so, uh, and here we are now, uh, got to wait 20 plus years until the next one gets in here, unless you're willing to travel. There are a few others that are worldwide, uh, but the next one that comes this close to Michigan is in 75 years in 2099. So uh, if you're planning on making a short trip to go see one, you're going to be waiting a little while. Um, it's just, just to have that be known. But we got more sunshine out there today, which is good. Yes. And we'll talk about the eclipse a little more. And I got the picture. I've got it in my, in my whole thing. So I'll show you guys say, that. I saw the 2017 yeah. one also, mm -hmm. like Justin did, but not the total solar eclipse. So right. it was cool experiencing partial solar eclipse in Michigan back in 2017 and yeah. then going with Justin. Yes. Hearing yeah. everything he had to say on the total solar eclipse and he he was right. You just have to experience it like there's no way to put it into words. Yeah and, and there's uh, obviously you can see on social media now it makes it easier to share images and pictures and videos and all that but being there is just a like completely different thing just because pictures don't capture it. Yeah, yeah and it, it's, it's like people who have seen things like the northern lights or, or anything like that it just it ju doesn't do it justice uh, being in that kind of natural state and getting to witness something that's so incredibly rare is just very cool. Um, we only wish they happened more often. Yeah. You know, I was telling people earlier, I said, oh, yeah, I always do this at a solar eclipse. Like, always. Like, as if I do it, like, every year, every couple months, as opposed to my second time in my life. So, but very, very cool. And so uh, we'll talk more about that as we get a little deeper into what we're doing here. Um, but once again, uh, we've got some good conditions outside, and sky cams are pretty evident of that. Temperatures, though, are comfortable, too. Oh. So That's why I'm in yeah. a shorter sleeve today, because I... Yeah. It was warm yesterday. I know, I know. So I was like, today we gotta go short sleeve. And I'm gonna be on the weather patio. I'm not gonna be wearing no, this. I can tell you yeah, that. I've, I've, I've got a nice, uh, got a nice um, polo that I'll have to throw on the news ten polo. And so we'll be making a quick wardrobe change into that about an hour from now when you join us for Studio Ten. But in the meantime, outdoors right now, not bad at all. Uh, no eclipse today, of course, but uh, unfortunately. Yeah, but we do have some deep blue sky and just a few high thin clouds. Pretty good over US 127. On that Meridian Company Skycam Network, we're at 70 degrees. Southwest wind has helped us get back there, and so another really nice day across our state. We might not be quite this warm tomorrow, but we will be close in some spots, back into the upper 60s on our Wednesday. Not a bad Tuesday, though. Again, temps outside, 72 in Jackson and Mason, 70 in Charlotte. St. John's just shy at 69 degrees, but again, they update at the bottom of the hour, so in reality, it probably is already 70 degrees there, and I expect that number will jump around 230. 71 is the number in cold water, and once again, those warm numbers, we're enjoying them more than anyone else. 60 in Chicago is not bad, and 61 Des Moines, same thing. We're still kind of enjoying uh, that more comfortable air mass, and it's going to be with us most of the week. Uh, that little colder spurt up towards International Falls, that'll dive in as we get into the end of this week by Friday. So Friday will be probably the one colder day I'll say in the forecast because most of them are not bad at all and so decent conditions out there for us uh, as we move throughout the week. In fact you'll see the hour by hour temps uh, we might warm another degree or two before the day's done as we head into this afternoon and then slide down slowly this evening but those numbers through the sunset are all in the 60s or 70s and so we're doing pretty well heading into the overnight but it's dry air feels comfortable 
but it's also very easy to cool down too. And so since we have clear skies tonight, no blanket to retain any heat, we're going to go down in a lot of places maybe into the 30s Ooh. by tomorrow morning. And so it will chill off just a little bit, even though we do warm up again tomorrow. So satellite and radar, we've had a cold front kind of skate through uh, the area just to the north is where the rain has been. You see over towards Flint and on east of I-69 uh, over there, just north of Port Huron towards Sandusky and those areas. Uh, got a couple of spotty rain showers that have formed along that front. They're all moving out of the state as the rest of that very small rain threat some folks had today creeps away. And so none of us did see the rain, um, which we were expecting to be the case, but even that like 10% chance that a few northern sections and eastern sections had, uh, if you live in places near Owasso, uh, that did not come to fruition today as the system moved off and away. And now we're into dry weather really for the next probably 48 hours, including tonight. First pitch forecast we know for the home opener for the Lansing Lugnuts. Not always everybody's favorite weather, uh, but this year I think we're going to luck out pretty well. For, to have a 605 first pitch and be in the mid 60s is pretty good, and to do that with dry weather and partly cloudy skies is even better. And so we're going to enjoy that as we head into the evening by 8 p.m. Still in the upper 50s, just got a couple clouds, so maybe take a light layer if you'd like. Um, and that might be all you need. You might not even need it at the start of the game, but by later on as the sun kind of gets ready and starts setting, you might cool off a bit. But hey, you know, it's good, uh, good to have this be another thing again, to have the lug nuts back in action at Jackson Field. Very exciting to have them in town. Um, and you know, uh, part of the game of baseball is the pickle. So, which of course I wanted to add because I know we were talking about it earlier. So the hour by hour forecast here, headed into the evening. Again, not too much going on, mainly clear skies. We'll eventually get back and settle on the 30s briefly overnight, but really it's around 40 for most of us by tomorrow morning to start the day. Lots of sunshine though, and that should get us back into the upper 60s. I've got about 67 as the high in Lansing. Wouldn't be surprised to see a couple uh, 68, 69, some things like that. And so we'll keep our eyes out and expect to see some decent conditions for the day. A couple late day clouds roll in, but we we are still dry, and as we head out into Thursday's time frame, we are once again going to be back into the rain. And so uh, Wednesday night late into Thursday morning, nice batch of rain, healthy one comes through as you see here, upper 40s temperatures, and then we're going to see the numbers probably climb into the 60s before we lose them off the map here Thursday, but we are going to be dealing with those rains on and off, and that will continue into Thursday night as well. Showers. Yeah, wraps around one more time, and when this wraparound happens that you see here, 2 a.m. Fridays as far out as our model goes, but when you see where that is, that's where we're going to have the cold air trying to spill in. It's not going to be cold enough to mix snowflakes. That's good news, uh, but it probably does keep our highs close to 50 degrees by Friday, and that's as far as we'll go. But it's a quick recovery that we have as well. So we'll peek at the 10-day forecast here, and again, those 60s next couple of days after today. Still not a bad day tomorrow, and then Thursday, you have the rain showers moving in. That'll be a bit of a soggy day. Might get a break in the mid to late afternoon before the rain returns Thursday night into Friday. But Friday's also a windy day, and it'll be, again, a west-northwest wind brings us in colder air. So 50s, low 50s, that is, for the highs. Might even be a few upper 40s. And then 30s lows, though. And so we're not dipping too close to the freezing mark. As close as we get in the next 10 days is Friday night. And I think 37 is going to keep us safe from mixing in any snow. And even if somebody well to the north did mix in a flake or two, none of it would even have a chance to stick, which is good. And so we won't deal with snow. And I'm fairly confident going out 10 days from here, this very well could be us rounding the corner officially into spring weather because next week we go back to high 60s and low 70s for highs. I want to say that the beginning and the end of the 10-day forecast, they match. 72, just yeah. as you got the yeah. rain. Yeah, they're pretty good. And I mean, even Sunday is 70 degrees and a couple 60s next week. Tuesday's 66, the coldest day next week. We'd take that. That's pretty good for the time of year. Um, and so once again, even overnight lows by the end of the forecast are close to 50. And so we're staying way away from any of those uh, snowflakes. And so that's good news as we get deeper into April here. We may have very well seen our last flakes of the year with the forecast looking the way it is. I suspect that by the time we get to late April, even a cold snap, it's really, really hard to get snow to mix in around here. And so we'll see. We'll have to get a really brutally cold one to do that, but we'll have to probably wait until next winter, um, or at least the, the fall sometime, a cold snap comes through. So probably several more oh, months goodness. until we get any snow back into the forecast. <laughs> but once again, it's not as long as we'll have to wait for the next one of these, oh. uh, which uh, was really fun yesterday. You can see uh, down here, we got me in the bottom left, Taylor's next to me. And then those are my buddy, that's my buddy Harold, the big guy in the middle there. 
Big Harold, our, our good old buddy. Um, He's got his Lions gear on, yep, right? Always, yep, always, always supporting the Lions. And then uh, to, to his left, on the far right of the screen, is my buddy uh, Brandon, who recently moved back to Michigan. He lived in Pennsylvania for a little while. And uh, he came over to join us. A lot of other friends, too. My brother Nolan was there and a whole bunch of people. So we had a lot of fun. Um, it was a really good time. And the camera really doesn't do it justice here, no. but um, it was a lot darker than it looks. You know, you had the, the phone camera sort of adjusting, and then the light up there at the top middle of the photo is uh, the moon blocking the sun. So we had a really, really good time. And uh, well, it looks like a little Cheerio. You can kind of see it up there. It does, with the yeah. If you, yeah, if you look really close, you can, you can kind of see. If anyone's watching on a device or a phone or whatever, and you can kind of zoom in, yeah, it looks. Uh, it looks really cool, and and there were a lot of pictures that did it better justice, but none none of it were as close to seeing it in person. And yeah. so we we were lucky enough to do that. Pemberville's a town that's just south of Toledo, uh, down that way, and so that that's where we were. We got about three ish minutes, a little over three minutes of totality there, and it both it's weird, and you now know because you've experienced it. We were both there, but it both feels like it flies by, and feels like it's like crawling i mean it's it's very weird to describe you know it's one of those things you got to be there witnessing it and then of course it's we were talking about it earlier when it starts moving the moon starts moving and the sun starts poking out behind it again everyone's going no 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 you just wish you could hit a pause button and just leave it blocking it for a little while longer it's a shame mm -hmm. that we wait this long to see such an incredible cool event and then you get like three four minutes most to enjoy it uh the totality of it, but um, just nonetheless, I guess it makes it all the more special, right? Very, very cool event, and and bring, brings up some emotions in you, and, it, and it's cool. It just, I guess it kind of gives you some weird life perspective. I don't know, something like that. I've seen two now, and it's and it's pretty cool. So you saw it. I was just mm -hmm. staring, and a single tear just fell down. Like I was in <laughs> yeah. awe, like chills. Know. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. you were there. We were there together, so we saw it like yeah. the dark. The pole barn light came on. The birds are flying. The animals are being weird. Yeah, the, chi the chickens they have in the back. I was laughing with my wife Alex, who was also there with us, and the chickens ran back into their like coop, like they were going to bed. Like just, it's it just very weird. Very cool underneath the path of totality. Yeah. And then how um, quickly yeah. the sun just came back. It was, mm -hmm. so, it was crazy because, like you said, 99% totality. And then we're like watching it inch closer and closer and we're like, well, it's still bright out. No, the yeah. second that it gets dark, it's dark. It's like, yeah, the shadow like comes like sweeping in across uh. the sky. And then it's, it's, it's like someone took a big giant curtain and just goes right over the top of you. And you go, oh my gosh, it got dark real fast. If you see the, it's um, pretty amazing. What is it? The time lapse. Mm, yeah. Yes. Posted that on my Facebook. Justin yeah. posted it too on mm -hmm. his. So go check it out. And oh, that very, still very doesn't cool. even give it justice. But yeah. you're just like, wow. Yeah. It's pretty nice. So yeah, we're we're excited we got to see it. Um, again, hopefully, hopefully you were whether you were here or you know wherever you went. If you did travel, let us know where you were, and if you have any cool photos, uh, share them with us. Uh, we we would love to see them and, and where you were at. Again, hopefully you observed safely. Um, the eclipse glasses are definitely the way to go. Some people had the little pinhole boxes or home remedies that they used, um, but uh, I personally I had a nicer like kind of hard pair of eclipse glasses not nice. the flimsy ones and they were cool because you could just put them on like regular sunglasses and just you know you were good like you didn't have to worry about the flimsy edges or anything and they were safe they were approved they were the uh the one two three one two um they were they were all ready to go so no, dash, those dash worked two. wonders so. yeah mm -hmm. those were nice yeah and they were good and we, we had some professional photographers that were there with us too that man they got some amazing close-up shots and and so we'll be sharing a lot of those in the coming days and you know, we'll wait until the next one. Should be a good one. But forecast, again, looks good for tonight. And uh, late week rain. That's what we got to look forward to. But we're going to enjoy some good days in this forecast. All tonight. right. Looking forward to I know. Yeah. I wish one more time we'll take a look at this just mm -hmm. because it was such a cool moment. Yeah. I, I, oh, God. I've been replaying it in my head since it happened. Yeah. And it's it's one of those things you just, you'll never forget. You know, it's very, very cool. Just, you know, where, obviously where we were because we had to Sorry, go, right? go somewhere <laughs> to see it. But it is historic. And, you know, you, you can count. There's only so many a century that take place in in one continent, and we got we were lucky to see one. I've been gosh, I've been lucky now to see two in seven yeah. years, and I, I still can't kind of believe it. So it's pretty nice. And uh, yesterday was cool. I will most definitely be. I'm I'm gonna make it known again, like I did last time. I will be off the next time there is one. <laughs> Where whatever I'm wherever I'm at, whatever I'm doing. 2044 in Oregon. I, I will have it booked. I'm gonna be. 
I'm going to be somewhere, somewhere where I can see it again. And if you got the ability to do so, you should too. It's it's worth it, even to just make the trip once in your life to go see it. It is worth um, the trip and very, the very gas cool. money and the drive time and the traffic. It's worth it. And if I have just if we have just sold you on it just now, I'm sorry that we just sold it you on it now. Since you got to wait 20 more years till it's in North America. We were getting you prepared but, for it, though, yeah. like weeks in advance. I, I know, <laughs> I know. We did, we did what we could, so anyway. Yes. Anyway, yeah. we will see you at 3 o'clock, yes. Justin. That's, that sounds great. Yeah. Will we see you in those um, pickle roulette sour punch bites? I don't know. I got, you know, these are sour punch bites, pickle roulette. There's there's uh, green apple, lemon, lime, watermelon, and pickle. All right. I'm going to try one more Let's of these. Try one more. Put, and put then my, we'll put bring myself. Aaron on the desk. All right. Wish you luck. Let's we'll see what we got here. Oh, golden, golden. I got that's that's watermelon for sure. That's for sure watermelon. Lucked out. Awesome. What'd you get? It's not bad, but I might have gotten green apple. Okay, it probably is. You would have known. Lemon lime? I think you would have known if it was pickled by now. Oh, I would have known. Okay. Good. Well, we made a face last time. Good. We're good. We okay. made it. It's stuck in my teeth now, but that's mm -hmm. okay. Let's see you at three o'clock. Be there. Sounds good. Yeah, very cool. Here's where you can stay up to date with Justin. Mm -hmm. uh, Studio 10 gets started here in just under 40 minutes, so you can watch Justin then. Maybe he'll have more of those pickle roulette things. Oh, let me put this back up. That's oh. embarrassing. <laughs> behind the scenes, behind the scenes. I'll cover that up. Um, but yes, <laughs> head over to Studio 10 at three o'clock. You can watch more into Justin's first alert forecast coming up. Um, oh, thanks, BW. Your cats say happy birthday. I, I love cats. So they're and dogs, all the animals. So there we go. Taylor's a cat person, uh -oh. in my pro professional opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, appreciate it, BW. Go check the forecast to stay on top of the spring lake temperatures, um, yes. and of course those spring showers. But yes. speaking on cats, any yeah. more serious note? Actually, yes. in Jackson County, Erin yes. has a story that she's working on today. Yes. I went to the Jackson County Animal Shelter because yesterday, uh, the so I'm just going to start all the way at the beginning. Yeah. Jackson County Animal Shelter, they had a kitten that was adopted. The kitten was brought in uh, for to be spayed and to be vaccinated. They go to get the kitten for her appointment. She's about two months old, and the kitten was missing. So they go, they look at their security footage, and on the security footage, they see a woman come into the shelter, put the kitten in her purse, and leave the shelter all in a span of four minutes. Uh, so the animal uh, control, or Jackson County Animal Control and Shelter, they're saying that the kitten was stolen um, and they are asking for the public's help. Um, kind of interesting actually, they've made contact with the woman on seen on the security footage and they're not totally sure if the kitten is still in her care or if it's missing. So if you live in the Jackson area, keep your eye out. It's a very small little kitten. Yeah. Um, she's she's brown. She's it's not all one color. She's got some kind of, it looks like striping, but she's still very little, so the pattern isn't really prominent. Um, but yeah, if you see a, a kitten, oh, hello, Crystal. Hi. Welcome. I'm going to bring it up. Oh, we're going to bring up Thank a picture. Yes. Thank you. Yes. can reference it. Thank you, Crystal. We've got some pictures um, online. But yeah, um, like Erin was saying, in Jackson County, be on the look out for any small kittens yeah. um, that have this, you said, brownish color. Yes. P trying to pull up a picture now for you guys. Um, the story is going to be on News 10 at uh, 6 o'clock. Um, uh, but it was, it was so sad, that poor family. Uh, so the kitten was actually born in the care of the Jackson County Animal Shelter. So they had Mama Kitty. She came in. Uh, they, she was super pregnant. Uh, that was actually the words they used, super pregnant. Um, and so they sent her out to a foster family. Uh, Mama Kitty gave birth to um, da, 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 this kitten right here. Um, and the a family friend of the people who were fostering Mama Kitty were going to be adopting her. Her name is Trixie. This, uh, the kitten's name is Trixie. And so they had, you know, kind of got to watch her grow up over the past two months. Um, yeah, there you can see. The bag. Yep, that's the uh, the kitten poking its head out of the bag. Uh, that with the as the woman left. Yeah, right there. Um, but this is her, Trixie. She is either missing or with the the woman that you see yeah, here in the go back to the uh, security then the other footage. Picture. Yeah, yeah, and they've already there made contact go. with this woman. Mm -hmm. But and you can even see right here. There's the the kitty right there. I'm circling it with the mouse. Um, but you know, the shelter says they do 
Um, it could potentially come with a felony charge, but really all they want is this kitten back and to be returned to the, uh, the people who, or the person who had adopted her. Yeah. Um, and the woman who took the kitten is actually on the, well, allegedly took the kitten, is on the do not adopt Mm -hmm. list. So she is not allowed to adopt uh, from the Jackson County Animal Shelter. Any reason as to why yet? Yes, the shelter told me that she had adopted cats in the past and how they do it there, um, uh, you adopt a cat, uh, I'm not sure if it's the same for dogs, but if you adopt a cat, um, uh, they have you bring them back in a couple months for kind of a checkup, maybe yeah. some vaccines, maybe to get uh, neutered, but also just kind of to check in on the animal. Um, uh, and she did not bring the cats back for the appointment. So they took the cats back out of her care and um, put her on the do not adopt list. So they're just really concerned right now for the kitten safety, Trixie safety. Yeah, their care. Yes, and want her uh, to be returned safely. Yes. So, yeah. Because but, going to these, it's not just adopting an animal because you just want to have a pet. Um, it's you are providing care and love and nurturing this animal so it can grow. Yeah. Um, just just like a baby, right? Totally. Yeah. But on uh, New Senate Six, you'll see a little bit more of Trixie and um, some of the some of the things that the the shelter uh, wants people to know about uh, this case and the situation. Yeah. All right. Yeah. News Tenant Six. We'll make sure to tune in. Thank yes. you, Aaron. Yeah, thank you, Taylor. Um, and taking a look at what else we have coming up during our 90 minutes of news. Aaron's going to get you know working on this story. So coming up during Mid-Michigan Matters on First at Four today, we're bringing in Sheriff Scott Rigglesworth talking about the Michigan's hands-free driving law, um, or Michigan's hands-free driving law. There you go. Uh, thank you, Aaron. And so Scott Rigglesworth is really going to be giving an update on the hands-free driving law that went into effect last year um, sometime in April. And if I remember correctly, it was April 1st of last year. Well, we're bringing him back in. There's been more patrols out on the roads, especially yesterday for the eclipse and some other big holidays coming up. And also just talking about the construction out on the roadways. So um, I was speaking with Sheriff Rigglesworth a couple of weeks ago when he came in um, to talk about a story on Mid-Michigan Matters. And so I was asking him about the hands-free driving law and an update. I said, you know, after putting this into place, did you notice less people on their phones? And he was telling me that it is still a problem across Michigan. So make sure that you are not on your phone. The hands-free driving law means having both hands on the wheel. No hand should be on the phone. You should have your phone up on a little dash mount or something that is out of reach so you cannot be distracted while on it. We want to make sure your eyes are on the roads, on the cars in front of you, behind you, all around you. You want to be aware of your surroundings. Um, making sure that even if you're not the one who's you know putting people in other harm's way that if someone else is doing that you're at least aware of it and can keep you and others safe as well so we're going to be talking about the hands-free driving law the statistics behind it and how it's going so far coming up news 10 at 5 we just brought you the sentencing of james and jennifer crumbly the parents of oxford high school shooter ethan crumbly we'll have more on this historic sentencing coming up on news 10 at 5. And it's historic because it's the first time that the parents are being charged in connection with the crime that their son committed. Again, this could change, um, be a precedent for, precedent for changing cases in the future. So we'll have more coming up News 10 at 5. Coming up News 10 at 6, our Riley Connell will have more on the resolutions being presented to the State Board of Education concerning emergency operations in K-12 through schools. With one of those resolutions being written by parents of two victims in the Oxford High School shooting. So News 10 at 5, News 10 at 6 um, intertwine a bit, focusing on the Oxford High School shooting. Again, News 10 at 5 talking about the James and Jennifer Crumbly sentencing hearing. And then also coming up News 10 at 6 with Riley Connell talking about um, the emergency operations K-12 through schools with these resolutions written by parents of the two victims in the Oxford High School shooting. So Riley will have more coming up News 10 at 6. And then coming up, News 10 at 5.30 today. Today is the home opener for the Lansing Lugnuts, and you heard Rochelle Legrand talking about that. So we'll be live from Jackson Field as the home team gets ready to take on in-state rivals, the Great Lakes Loons. Coming up, News 10 at 6, News 10's Mars Anderson talks with legal experts about the end of COVID funding used to help save rents from eviction. So he shares how those funds have impacted people in mid-Michigan and how legal battles over late rent have not only affected tenants, but also their landlords. We have that whole story coming up for you, News 10 at 5.30. And then 
News 10 at 6, even though you just heard um, Aaron share this, we'll share a little bit more again. It's a kitten napping case out of Jackson. So yes, the Jackson, Canimal, Animal, Jackson County Animal Shelter, excuse me, says a woman stole a kitten who was waiting to get the shot, start a new life with her family. All that needed to be left was getting those little vaccinations up to date and then, you know, having the new family adopt her and bring her home. So Erin Bowling will share more on that case and she'll have that all coming up today on News 10 at 6. Make sure you're tuning in then. And then one more thing that I want to show you in just a second here. I'll leave that up for a bit so you can see what we have coming up during our 90 minutes of news. I'll give you a live look over Jackson. Again, um, just tying into Aaron's story, I do want to give you a live look because it's beautiful outside, but also um, because if you are in Jackson County, I know this is a look over downtown Jackson, but in the overall Jackson County area, make sure you are on the lookout um, for the kitten, Trixie, um, and then also Keeping an eye out for that woman. Now, again, the Humane Society or uh, the ch shelter has reached out to the woman and made contact with her. Now they're looking for that kitten, and I'll show you that one more time. Um, so now we will get a live look or uh, just a look at our monitor here. This is the picture that was posted of the woman carrying the cat right here in that little spotlight in her bag. That's how she stole the kitten. And here is a picture of the kitten, super cute, little baby. It's got a little bit of a striped tail pattern. Um, and then it's back and more so a large chunk of its body, majority of it is a brown color. So just keep an eye out for this kitten. Um, again, getting it back into the hands of the Jackson County Animal Shelter so that family who rightfully adopted the kitten can take her home and give her a great life. Now I do wanna share if there is anything um, weighing you down in life right now going on to check out our you're not alone health series or mental health series going on all year long and throughout the month you can expect on studio 10 mid michigan matters and our 90 minutes of news and even other special reports talking with community members on their own mental health journey how they themselves have seen um, rock bottom and they speak on that you know i was in this really tough place whether that was with suicidal thoughts or because of anxiety stress depression um, addiction, anything of that sort, um, even a loss of identity. They are sharing their stories and even speaking with the mental health care professionals on the signs and the symptoms to look out for and the treatment and prevention that can help you get on your feet, get going, improve your mindset and know that you're not alone and you know, being vulnerable, opening up your story um, to other people. Um, so they have a better understanding of where you're coming from. So know that those resources, um, that QR code gets you to the resources, and all you have to do is scan it with your cell phone's camera. You'll see all the resources across mid-Michigan, or a handful of resources across mid-Michigan. Of course, you can do more research um, and find one that better suits what you're looking for. But yes, there you go, You're Not Alone Mental Health Series. Make sure to go check that out. Um, on the QR code. It's again, super easy. That is all you have to do. Um, and then you will be able to find even more resources. So that is what we have coming up um, today on News 10. I'm trying to find you um, Deanna's little tease so that she can share what she is coming up during our 90 minutes of news. Just give me a second here. And again, feel free to scan that QR code um, for more information. And we'll do that in just a second. We'll hear from Deanna in just a second. Right now, let's bring up Isley. We'll get Isley over here for the time being um, to talk about the story that she has coming up today. And Isley, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Taylor. How are you? I'm good. I'm trying to say, oh, there's your little name. There we go. Sounds good. We'll do this real quick. Take that down. Oh. And there we go. If we punch it in, there we'll be we able are. to see you. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? We are good. What are you working on today? So today I got to go to LCC, Lansing Community College, and see about their fire inter or not internship apprenticeship program. Yes. So it was very cool because they are training people who have just become firefighters to now have the skills of an EMT. So this can help them be a more overwhelmed firefighter and be able to help them with their firefighting duties. Yeah, so getting the resources, um, any sort of 
training with this program? Anything specific you were able to learn from that? Well, something really cool. They have a ambulance inside of their building, like a working one, sort of. It's like a just the box part of it. Hmm. So the people in the program can learn how to do the EMT things in an actual ambulance instead That's of so just cool. like in a classroom. So I thought that was really neat because then they had the ability to be able to be in the environment. <laughs> yes, the yep, yeah. exactly. Awesome. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, when will you have this story coming up? 6 p.m. tonight. All right. News 10 at 6. Thank yeah. you, Isley. One of more time, course. I'll show you what we have coming up. Oh, that's Aaron's name. We'll take that down real quick. Um, what's coming up during our 90 minutes of news? And then we will hear from Deanna. As you saw, Crystal was helping to put that up in the background. So there we go. Thank you, Isley. Um, and again, we'll have more come up in just a little bit here. Um, so again, that is what we have coming up during our 90 minutes of news. Make sure to go check that out. And then we are going to hear from Deanna right now. So give me just a second here. We are very busy today, as you can see. All right, let's hear from Deanna. Coming up, News 10 at 5.30. Hi, Taylor. I'm here at Clary University, where sexual assault survivors and supporters are raising awareness. Now, this is centered around artwork like the ones behind me telling their stories. I spoke with a sexual assault survivor who shares the importance of this event. I'll have details on News 10 at 530. Back to you all. All right. Thank you, Deanna. Again, talking about, um, as you saw, some of those shirts saying stop rape. Um, and all of those. So one more time, again, I know I just showed this, but with Deanna's story, I do want to um, provide this resource. Again, if you've gone through any sort of trauma, you know, maybe it's not the depression and anxiety, um, but you've gone through something traumatic, um, make sure that you are checking out this resource. Again, um, all you have to do is scan that QR code um, with your cell phone's camera. It'll pull up a link and from there, all you have to do is check out the resources that we've provided as a guidance tool. And from there, just take it and see what resources can better help you across the area. I know that insurance can always play a factor into the resources that you are able to receive with the access and availability. So whatever works best for you, we just want you to know that you are not alone. So I will take one last live look outside so you can see all of the warm temperatures happening, um, all the sunshine, all the blue skies. And this is a live look over Michigan State University. Uh, so you're getting that nice live look over there. Uh, but yeah, it's looking great, nice and vibrant out on campus. You're seeing the blue skies, um, a little bit of those clouds, but nothing to worry about. So go enjoy the spring like day today. Again, uh, Justin Bradford said it'll warm up in the mid to high 60s tomorrow, um, but it won't be as beautiful like it is today. So if you want to get anything done outside, make sure to go do that today um, and then Otherwise, keep an umbrella in your car for the rest of the week because, as you heard Justin say in his forecast, it is going to start raining Thursday and then carry that into Friday. So there's a large system moving through those April showers to be on the lookout for. So in the meantime, go enjoy the blue skies and the sunshine that we do have. And if you saw the sun being covered yesterday by the moon from that total solar eclipse, that was phenomenal. Let us know on our Facebook pages, our website, WILX.com, where you went to see it, and you can share all of those photos with us. We would love to see all of that. So, oh, going to have to get some water. I've been talking too long. Have a great Tuesday, everyone.